2024 might be the biggest year of Montero's career for the Rockies. We talk about that and review his 2023 on today's episode. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 17th day of November in the year 2023. I'm your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, you are in the right spot because that's what we do around here. Let's talk Rockies baseball each and every day. This week, we took mostly a break from our reviewing the Rockies series to talk about some uh, philosophical, big some question type stuff with the Rockies. Bigger picture idea type of stuff. But today, we go back to reviewing the Rockies. And a Rocky that is probably in one of the most interesting and maybe the biggest year of his career as we go to El Riz Montero and uh, we go to his... Uh, uh, we look at his 2023, we look at the really weird way the Rockies have handled Montero, and we look at the fact that this year is going to be a big, big moment and a big, big year in his career as it's going to be a moment where we need to see a breakout style performance, but we need to see the Rockies use Montero consistently like we did see at the end of the season last year. Let's talk about that and more coming up on today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Uh, before we dive into everything today, today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. And uh, you can find this podcast on your favorite streaming service. We really appreciate you all out there for making us your first listen of the day here on the Locked On Rockies podcast and the Locked On Podcast Network. Find us on your favorite streaming service and find us on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show and you can fire off your Rockies hot takes and thoughts in the Locked On Rockies YouTube comment section. Your Rockies, uh, your subscription to the Locked On Rockies podcast is a great, great way to help the show. And I really, really do appreciate it. And I give you the virtual fist bump. Boop. If you do so. So thank you so much for supporting the show. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for making us your first listen of your day and being an everyday or out there, our everyday listeners. Okay. Uh, so Montero, Aileris Montero, and uh, someone that I'm 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 still hopeful for. I am. I am. I think that there are things to be somewhat encouraged by, but we also learned a lot about Montero in 2023. We learned defense ain't a strong suit. So third base. That plan really wasn't going to pan out, and especially when you with, with the with the downgrade and the fact that during that time he was struggling on defense. Montero was also struggling at the dish. Uh, the beginning of the season was not all that kind to Montero. There, uh, he goes uh, and bats in April, where he was uh, playing pretty consistently. He goes uh, bats two fourteen, two sixty seven, two eighty six. When you're looking average OBP and slugging. In that time, he strikes out uh, 16 times that month and uh, only gets uh, nine hits in 42 at bats. There, uh, the good news though drives in three, and uh, but the power for Montero, we didn't get to see a home run for from Montero until June 23rd. Uh, that was uh, uh, this is when uh, the Rockies were still turning to Montero pretty consistently here. Um, and uh, this was kind of the last big stretch in June. Just really tough, tough month for Montero. There are 19 strikeouts while carrying a 149, 163, 277 average. So he might have driven in six and might have gotten his first home run and first triple of the season there. That's what led to the Rockies uh, basically giving him one more chance in July uh, before uh, basically not having him for the rest of the month. He returned on July 26th where he was able to uh, to to put together a nice little solid line and a couple and a handful of games there a good solid four games for the Rockies where he was uh, certainly impactful in the in that time but what we did see from Montero was a really strong finish to the season in September and a bounce back year in August to encourage the fact that Montero if given consistency 
is going to be able to make adjustments, is going to be able to 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 get in the groove of things. And and that was something that that he didn't have at all times last year. For example, he was playing pretty consistently there in June, but then doesn't play between June 17th and June 21st is another day in between where he play, doesn't play on the 22nd and then gets back into it. There's just a lot of pockets in here of inconsistent playing time for Montero until you get to August, where he basically becomes just about an everyday player playing a lot. I mean, again, he did play a lot in June and April, but all of May, not of uh, he's not up at the major league level. He's not playing with the Rockies. He only has he sees the majors twice. And then again, two months of in between where, in my opinion, the best way to have had Monty go through the season last year was to go through the grind and the and the and the effort of consist of, of, of being able to build up and handle major league hitting. Because we knew the problem with Monty last year, especially in that first half of the season with the log jam with Crone and Gritchick and everyone else and, and also playing third base for a little bit, we weren't able to really let him get into his place, find his place. The Rockies didn't really find have the place for Monty until later in the season when they moved on. And he fits really well into that Bryant rotation with, with first base and DH and, and same with you know, a, a player we'll have to talk later on about it in Michael Tolia. Once the Rockies consistently turned to this guy and 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 allowed him to have confidence and consistency in his understanding of his role and where he's going to be in the lineup, that's a benefit for him. That's a huge that that's something that that lacked the entire that has lacked the entire time he's gone up and down and up and down. At least this year, the Rockies did give him at the end of the season two full months to really see what he can do. And in those two months, he had his two strongest months of the season. Uh, you know, the, you can look at some of the numbers, and but they're, I'm saying full months. April was, no, yeah, it, the, the best months for Montero this year were August and September. Now, they didn't knock your socks off. They didn't blow you away. They weren't as good as you hoped. But you were seeing Montero able to contribute and seeing Montero get more comfortable in his position and in his role with the Rockies. He's not a third baseman. Defense is not something we should be counting on Montero. First base is fine for him. First base DH is the future for Montero, and that works out fine, especially if you're going to have him rotate with Chris Bryant and, you, and, and you're set there. Now, Montero playing first base will complicate the Tolia question, and that adds things. And 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 he, Michael Tolia, will complicate that question as well. Same with uh, you know how they use right field, just about who's getting what playing time there. But I think this year, I'm hoping going into 2024, Montero can now know that there's not a big focus on his defense. His really play a a, a good first base. That's all you got to do, and work on this batting and unlock that power and unlock that consistency and pop that we know that 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 we haven't seen yet cuz we know we can hit the ball and we know we can hit the ball hard we know we can hit the ball really really well i mean his hard hit percentage is uh is 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 a, is a 44.3% hard hit percentage the rest of his advanced metrics aren't looking too great but when he's hitting the ball he's hitting the ball hard the, he just needs to stop striking out so much Oh, my goodness. And I think that's, again, another thing that directly correlates to the weird and wacky way the Rockies have used Montero coming up. He hasn't been able to get build a consistent eye against major league pitching because he goes through he's going through so many levels and so and going up and down and not getting the consistency. It didn't, you know, the argument doesn't doesn't improve when you look at uh, the, the 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 end of the season in August and September, where he strikes out thirty times in both months, twenty nine in September. He only finishes there, but uh, we're going to transfer over the three strikeouts he had in 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 the October first game against Minnesota. There, it, that that's unacceptable. That that cannot happen. It, it really can't. I mean, there's a there's if, if Montero's the big power power bat and and strikeouts and he's and he's hitting and he's leaving the yard all the time, that's fine. But he needs to work on on just me being able to handle and and navigate through major league hitting, and uh, and and being able to be a a a, a threat at the dish, because even throughout the struggles, we still got 11 home runs from Montero last year. 
Still got 39 RBI from Montero last year and 284 at-bats. The, the, the power and the run-generating potential is there. But step number one for Monty and all offseason long, and he ain't alone in this, got to cut down on the strikeouts. Uh, let's continue to review Montero. Let's continue to uh, to talk about what we liked, what we didn't like here uh, about Montero's uh, performance this year and uh, what we want to see more of coming up here in segment number two. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about some of the folks that help make this show possible. And that includes Jace Medical. Jace Medical's got you covered. When you're looking for some daily antibiotics or maybe a couple of other type of medicine like ED generics, whether you're on extended travel, bracing for a major weather event, or limited by yet another supply sh shortage, you are covered by Jace Medical. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical, antibiotics and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in a one-year supply. That's right. You can stock up, be safe, good to go. One-year supply so you don't have to constantly go back to the store or worry that you're going to run out. Like I said, you got those ED generics for Cialis, Viagra, and more. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use the promo code locked on. That's promo code locked on when you check out at jacemedical.com. A verified customer had this to say about Jace. I am thankful for this service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year's supply. I also ordered the antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you know would like to get some peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily medicine, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Don't forget to use the promo code locked on when you visit jacemedical.com. That's promo code locked on for $20 off your purchase at jacemedical.com. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk. If you missed the show this week, we talked a lot about the future for the Rockies, talked about trading off veteran players, and we also look back at the Rocky or the A's move and how we would feel if the Rockies moved on and left. And uh, it would be a bummer. I was actually it was it was certainly not fun as we feel for A's fans as uh, they get ready to to move on there. Uh, we're talking and reviewing Elaris Montero here on the show today. And, and, and the biggest takeaway from his season this year, I think, was, again, the Rockies' weird way of using him this year, the lack of consistency, and the encouraging uh, trends we saw in when they, the Rockies did use him consistently in the second half of the season. This is a good line. This is a, a, a the most encouraging thing to take away from Montero's season last year was the month of September. 94 at-bats for Montero in that time. In that time, he scored 21 times. He drove, he drove in, 20, uh, he had 28 hits. He uh, was, uh, including that time, had six doubles, had six home runs for 13 RBI at that time. He drew eight walks. And his batting line was 298, 368, 553. That's the Montero the Rockies need. That's the Montero the Rockies need to lean on. And this is going to be, I think, the factor that we're going to have to see. And, and, and I think it is going to be something that that it, it, he's not alone in being a, a potential high power, multi base, base, uh, a run generating type of guy that strikes out a lot. But the, the that blemish and that thing, it is held back a little bit when you look at the fact that he struck out 29 times in the month of September. He was striking out. He he had a stretch where he was striking out at least two times a game for four games and, and, and did that in, in six of, uh, or in five of, of seven games. And, and, and there's far too many when you scroll for, for Montero, three strikeout, four strikeout, two strikeout, these crooked number strikeout games. Just, you just can't go all or nothing like that. Hitting a being able to get there's just so much more value to getting that ball in play, and I love the fact that Montero's got the power, got the oomph, got the thump. I don't think it's going to be crazy if he, if he plays consistently. I don't think it's crazy to think that he's a twenty plus home run hitter next year. 
I don't think it's crazy to think that that he's a guy that 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 could drive in, you know, 70 plus RBI next year. But it doesn't start if you're missing and swinging and whiffing. That's a big, big problem. Because when you're looking at, he feasts on fastballs. Feasts on fastballs. When you look at StatCast and you look at it, batting average 336 against uh, against fastballs, 563 slugging, exit velocity of 92.3, whiff percentage of 21%. But then you go to breaking pitches and it plummets and and it plummets even more for off speed pitches. Striking out 52 times on breaking pitches, batting average of 186, a slugging of 339, a whiff percentage of 50, 50. And then when you go to off speed pitches, the batting average uh, drops even further. Strikeouts drop, but also the amount of the number of, of off speed pitches he saw compared to breaking pitches is a lot different. So, strikes out 24 times on off speed pitches, 52 times on breaking pitches. Batting average there for, for, for off speed pitches, 156, a slugging of 311. The exit velocity down to 79.7 and a whiff percentage of 57.5. You cannot be whiffing on over half of the pitches and two-thirds of the pitch mixes that people have. That cannot happen. That is the, the, the biggest flaw in Montero's game right now, his inability to hit breaking and off-speed pitches because everything moves <laughs> nowadays. It's great to see that you can jump. I love, I love an aggressive jump all over a fastball, rip it, get rip and grip and, and go after it. Love that. But that is just not the way that I mean, especially when teams know this, especially when teams have the data and are going to attack this. They're not going to, you're not going to see this. And Montero's probably not going to see very many fastballs to start the season next year. The adjustment has to be made now and he has to be ready to go. And that's why with the Rockies up and down and and, and not getting him the, the consistency until the uh, until August. Like I said, I know April, but again, plays a month of April, goes down in May, plays a month in June, goes down in July. Going and seeing those AAA pitchers wasn't helping Montero fix these problems. Getting him more at bats at the AAA level wasn't doing anything but showing us what we already knew. He mashes AAA. Now, as the Rockies, as an organization, they have to fix this. This is something that it, 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 it's it, Montero is 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 one of the worst offenders in this case. But you can't be having a, a guy that, that is not helping your player prepare. It, it, it's another example where I think the Rockies fall short. That is almost 60% of the time that he is missing on off-speed pitches. That's insane. And it's not much, and, and, and the problem is it's been two years of, of struggle. He didn't have a ton of at bats in 2022 at the major league level, 185. But in that time, he still struggled with these pitches. So again, this is another instance of you brought this guy in. You were excited about this guy coming in, yet you're not helping him really beat the things that are an issue. You're not fully preparing him. And 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 this, I I really have to wonder. And, and I don't think it's that crazy to say is Montero's issues with strikeouts and as well as the Rockies issues with strikeouts as a whole, another factor of this team's lack of analytics and lack of use of that and lack of, of, of focus on that. I know they're building, they've built up and they might've changed yada, yada, yada. But again, this is another example where I, I it just feels like pitchers are not only are they great, but when they face the Rockies this last year, my, oh, my, there were just so many moments where they just felt like they were on two completely different levels, completely different levels. 
So as much as Montero needs to bounce back, and obviously it's part of the plan and, and it needs to do stuff, and, and, and certainly it's it, there's things that he needs to work on, it's, again, can we trust this staff to get the most out of this guy? How many times have I asked this question in these reviewing the Rockies? There are there's, the interesting parts of Montero's game are there, and now we don't have to really worry as much about the defensive side. He ended up playing a pretty decent first base too, making some good plays. I think letting getting into that groove and finally having a place for him can build up that confidence that's going to allow him to go into the box and approach things with a little bit more confidence that he doesn't need to go so big all the time. The problem with Montero is the mindset seems to be it's go big or go home every time, and that just hasn't worked out, especially when the team or when the pitcher mixes up the pitch mix and goes off speed or breaking ball. Those uh, those advanced numbers on those off-speed pitches and breaking stuff are, are really jarring and eye-opening. That's a massive problem that the Rockies need to fix because this really is a year that we need to see a little bit of breakthrough with, uh, with, with Montero. Because the time is now, and you're going to have to start figuring out what you're going to do with Montero, Bryant, and Tolia all trying to play first base. Let's keep uh, the conversation rolling. Let's wrap things up about talking about Montero. Let's look ahead towards the weekend. All coming up in segment number three. This is the Locked on Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, well, good news. You're in the right spot. That's what we do around here. Talk Rockies baseball each and every day here on your favorite streaming services and on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel. I'm Paul Holden, your Rockies fan extraordinaire. We've been talking about uh, Elaris Montero here today, and and I'm not I, I and I think my thing with Monty is I'm 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 not out on him. I'm I, I'm I still think that we need to see the first real full season. Montero has not had a season yet in the first two that he's played where he's gotten more than he he just finished a slightly over 300 plate appearances this season. Played in 85 games for the Rockies. Hasn't even played in triple-digit games for the Rockies yet. I think that there needs to be, we need to get more time. We need to see more time. We need to see what he can do. And we need to see what the uh, the possibilities are for Montero. We need to see what, we just need to see more. I need to see him play more. I need to see him play more consistently. And I need to see him take steps forward as well. I need to see him. I need to see a, a, a solid spring into a hot start for Montero this year. Because just like I have my concerns with the, with the Rockies ability to develop him, I have my concerns about what we've seen with Monty at, at the major league level when it comes to that, to the approach on offense. I'm not, I don't, we don't need to spend so much time dwelling on the fact that third base didn't work for him because it, they, they quickly pivoted and they, they, they moved away. And when they finally opened the door and opened the possibilities for him, I was really encouraged to see after the trade deadline, Montero was someone that benefited from the, from the, from the departure of all those veterans. I think the jury is still out on Montero. I think there's still way too much we need to learn about the guy. And there's still so much that we need to figure out. But the clock starts to tick. First base is really interesting for the Rockies. Same with right field with, with the log jam there. You can't play Chris Bryant, Montero, and Tolia every day. It's this itch in the back of my throat driving me nuts so how are you going to navigate that throughout the season i mean obviously you're fine with chris bryant the health issue you can just go with the two of them you're set but but what if chris bryant's healthy i doubt the rockies are going to put montero in right field that much 
So the performance of Montero directly impacts where, you know, would he potentially become tradable if the Rockies aren't able to get the performance out that they that they want, that they're hoping for? If he does perform, if he is taking steps forward, is Michael Tolia a trade option? How confident are the Rockies in Montero as well? That's a good, that's an interesting question after the way last year shook out with the with the two send downs for two of the months of the season. But I, I'm not going to sit here. We can't sit here and immediately just 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 look at the 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 downsides and the flaws and the only things there and, and throw our hands up and say it's over and done. When the guy hasn't played 100 games yet for the Rockies, and it's not due to injury. This is a big year for A. Larice Montero. This is a big moment for him. Because if he breaks through, if he cut down, if he's cuts down on the K's and is able to contribute on offense like he believes and like the Rockies believe he can. He is going to be the secret power piece that this team is missing. He's got great power potential. He's someone that can hit 20 home runs for the Rockies. He is someone that can drive in 70 runs for the Rockies, 80 runs for the Rockies. He's someone that can score 60, 70 times. He's got that potential. He just needs to be given the chance to prove it and consistently do it. And I think that this this year, the Rockies don't have much of a choice. But we'll see. We'll see how it all pans out. We'll see what comes next for Montero and the Rockies. I'm staying positive. I'm staying hopeful. And I'm keeping my 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 mind positive because I, I I think Monty is going to be a nice boost in power for the Rockies. I hope next year. What are your thoughts on Montero? Where do you think he fits in the lineup? What do you think he's going to do in 2024? Let me know in the Locked On Rockies YouTube comment section. Let me know what you want to hear me talk about as well. But folks, this is going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Rockies, and that's going to do it for another week of Locked On Rockies. We got more Rockies action coming your way next week. Reviewing the Rockies, following the biggest trends in sports or the, the trends in baseball, all that good stuff. And of course, if any Rockies news breaks, you know we'll be talking about it right here on the pod. Find us on your favorite streaming service. Find us on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel. Find us wherever you get podcasts. And thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We really appreciate it. Thank you, our everydayers out there for making Locked On Rockies your first listen of the day. For your second listen, go check out Locked On MLB or You can go stay up to date with all Colorado sports, all the Colorado sports action that you need going on there on the Locked on Broncos, Locked on Avalanche, Locked on Nuggets, and Locked on Buffs podcast. Until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked on Rockies podcast.